Hello dear children. Welcome to this crash course. The chapter for today's discussion is ray optics and wave optics. Let us first go through the synopsis, recapping of important concepts and revisiting the equations. The basic ideas of geometrical optics are reflection and refraction at plane surfaces and curved surfaces. So this is all about reflection and refraction at plane surfaces and curved surfaces. This is the essence of this entire chapter. So first of all, reflection. Let us consider a plane surface. According to loss of reflection, you know, the incident ray that is I and the reflected ray that is R and the normal to the point normal at the surface at the point of incidence all in, lie in the same plane. This is called the plane of incidence. The plane is known as plane of incidence. This plane is plane of incidence and also known as plane of reflection by the way. And according to loss of reflection, the angle of incidence and angle of reflection are equal to each other. So I is equal to R. Angle of incidence and angle of reflection are equal to each other. Many a times this is written in the vector form like this. Suppose E cap represents the unit vector along the direction of incidence. N cap represents the direction of unit vector along normal and R cap represents the unit vector along the direction of reflected ray. Then R cap is equal to E cap minus two times E cap dot N cap N cap. So this is how we represent this idea. And in our current discussion, we consider two main things. One is object and the second is image. Object is said to be real if the rays actually diverge from that particular point. And the object is said to be virtual if the rays appear to converge or they converge. Image is decided by reflected or refracted rays. The point image for a mirror is the point towards which the rays reflect from the mirror or actually converge that is real image or we can say in the case of virtual image it is that idea from which the reflected rays appear to diverge. So if I consider reflection by a plane mirror remember the size of the image is same as that of the object. For a real object, the image is virtual and for a virtual object, the image is real. And also remember, for a fixed incident ray, suppose this is the incident ray and this is the plane mirror. And if the mirror is rotated by an angle theta, then the reflected ray rotates through an angle of 2 theta. It rotates through an angle of 2 theta. One of the very simple concepts but quite useful in handling problems. Number of images in an inclined mirror or say number of images in inclined mirrors or multiple reflections. This is the idea is like this. First of all, find the value of 360 divided by theta. Let's call this as m. Now, if m is even, then 
number of reflections formed is number of images formed i'm sorry is m minus 1 for all positions of object however if m is odd then n is equal to m if the object is not on the bisector and if m is uh, for the same case n is equal to m minus 1 if the object is on the bisector so the trick is to get the value of m what is that m 360 by theta and if m is even then n is equal to that is the number of images formed is m minus 1 for any position of the object and if this turns out to be odd then n is equal to m if the object is on the bisector otherwise it is m minus 1 and if m is fraction suppose i consider m to be a fraction then you may ask what about this one then n is the nearest even number n is the year nearest even number suppose i consider the idea of paraxial rays you know paraxial rays are the rays which form very small angle with the axis these are called paraxial rays and all the formulae that we discuss here are applicable for paraxial rays only. Here, in order to discuss all those things, the sign convention that is followed is something like this. It's basically Cartesian sign convention. According to which, the pole is at the origin. And the direction of the incident ray is taken as positive direction of incident ray is taken with positive sign positive x axis and vertically up positive y axis if it is along the incident direction and all the distances are measured from the pole so, what is your reference line? Reference, reference point is the pole. Suppose I consider in this case a spherical mirror. You know, a spherical mirror is basically a cutout portion of a sphere. For example, if I consider thing like this, I can cut out this portion, I can silver this portion and this is your C center of curvature and this is your focal point F and this is M, M dash which is the mirror. And this is what is known as concave mirror. Here the ray of light can be shown to be incident like this. Likewise a convex mirror can be shown like this. This is C and here is the focal point and a ray of light which is incident like this appears to bend towards focal point and it actually eventually gets reflected like this this is your incident ray this is a reflected ray incident ray is here the reflected ray is here this is a convex mirror a convex mirror and remember the radius of curvature and the focus of concave mirror so radius of curvature and the focus or say focal length are taken with negative sign 
and for a convex lens r and f are taken with positive sign they are taken with positive sign mirror formula relates the object distance and the image distance to the focal length f is the x coordinate of the focus u is the x coordinate of the object and v is the x coordinate of the image we call it as object distance image distance and the focal length the transverse magnification is given by h2 divided by h1 or hi divided by ho this can also be written as minus v divided by u where v is the image distance and u is the object distance and remember these are measured perpendicular to the principal axis of the mirror and the longitudinal magnification is given by m we can call it as ml and this says length of the image divided by length of the object length of the image divided by length of the object and for small objects ml is equal to minus m square where m is the transverse magnification if i consider a spherical mirror for example the representation can be like this let's assume that the object is an object is traveling along this direction and velocity of the image needs to be found out let's assume that the object is moving along this direction and the image velocity has to be found out so velocity of the image of a moving object so object is moving now in this case the object is coming from infinite uh, or infinity towards the focus of the concave mirror so i can write 1 by u plus 1 by v is equal to 1 by f or i can write minus 1 by i can differentiate it with respect to t so i'll get 1 minus 1 by u square du by dt minus 1 by v square dv by dt is equal to 0 or velocity of the image is equal to minus v square by u square velocity of the object velocity of the object so this can also be written like this minus m square velocity of the object so this is velocity of the image with respect to mirror and this is velocity of the object with respect to mirror that is du by dt this part is du by dt the left hand side is dv divided by dt if i consider a spherical mirror or say a mirror then its optical power is given by minus 1 by f measured in diopters of course so in diopters the optical power of a mirror is the reciprocal of its focal length with a negative sign of course so let us consider the idea of refraction of course at plane surfaces and then curved surfaces so the laws are like this first of all laws of refraction again if i consider is an interface on which light is incident this is the normal and the ray of light gets refracted inside the medium r being the angle of incidence and i being the angle of incidence and r being the angle of refraction n1 and n2 being the respective refractive indices and n cap is the unit vector along the normal 
then first of all <coughs> the incident ray the refracted ray and the normal all lie in the same plane that's the basic idea and the same thing can also be written in this form e cap cross n cap dot r cap is equal to zero what is that e cap unit vector along the direction of incident ray r cap is the unit vector along the direction of the refracted ray and n cap is the direction or unit vector along the direction of the normal normal drawn at that point <coughs> another law which is quite useful is snell's law according to which n1 sin i1 is equal to n2 sin r i n1 sin i is equal to n2 sin r or we can write sin i divided by sin r is equal to n2 by n1 that is refractive index of the second medium with respect to that of the first medium this is also written as 1 n2 and this 1 n2 which is n2 by n1 happens to be the ratio of the speeds as given by this equation n2 by n1 is equal to v1 by v2 or this is also equal to lambda 1 by lambda 2 actually this is written in the vector form like this n1 refractive index mod of e cross n is equal to n2 mod of r cross n remember this vector representation of snell's law also remember that during refraction there is no change in the frequency of the light during refraction the ray of light undergoes a change in its path there is a deviation so this is the direction of the refracted ray c i is the angle of incidence and r is the angle of refraction then this is the deviation the deviation is given by i minus r so whenever a ray of light undergoes a change in the path the deviation from its current path actual path is given by delta is equal to i minus r if i consider such a refraction to take place from a parallel sided block a parallel sided slab or block then what exactly happens let us see the ray of light is incident here it undergoes refraction and it is now uh, it has actually traveled from rarer to denser medium therefore it moves towards the normal and then it gets out traveling from denser to rarer medium therefore it moves away from the normal but clearly the incident ray and the emergent ray are parallel to each other thus there is a shift in its position and this is what is called as lateral shift there is a shift in its position or say there is a shift in its path this is what is called as lateral shift let t be the thickness i be the angle of incidence here and r be the angle of refraction at the first surface this is same as i here right this is same as i thus if i consider the lateral shift as some x or say l then that lateral shift t is given by or say x given by lateral shift x is given by t into sin of i minus r divided by cos r where t is the thickness of the slab t is the thickness of the slab remember the emergent ray will not be parallel to the incident ray if the medium on both the sides are different the requirement is that this medium and this medium should be same they should have the same refractive index likewise if a ray of light travels from one medium to another medium then it gives rise to an apparent change in the position of an object for example imagine that an object which is 
placed inside this medium is viewed from this medium. Let us see what happens. So this is a ray of light starting from the object and it eventually reaches the observer here. So this is the eye position. This is where the observer is present. But the observer perceives the object to be here. The observer perceives the object to be here. He perceives it to be at a depth of some h dash. Even though the actual depth is h, he perceives it to be at a depth of h1, h. Let's assume that the refractive indices are n1 and n2 here and assume that n1 is greater than n2, then for a near normal incidence, h dash is given by n2 by n1 into h, n2 by n1, n2 by n1 into h. So, there is a shift in the position and this is known as apparent depth. So, he looks at the object and tells that it is at this depth. So, there is an apparent shift also. There is an apparent shift. What is that apparent shift? Delta H. Clearly, that delta H is equal to H dash minus H or H minus H dash and that is equal to T into 1 minus 1 by N. What is that T? T is the thickness of the slab. For example, here, if I look at it, then you can consider it like this. T is the thickness here and refractive index is 1 here. It's viewed from here and the object is located here and it travels like this and eventually it comes out like this. So, the reported position is here and this is the apparent shift. This is the apparent shift. Even though the object is here, it is perceived to be here. So, that shift in the position, what is called as apparent shift is given by delta H which is T into 1 minus 1 by N. Remember, the apparent shift is always along the direction of the incident ray. And H and H dash are always measured from the surface in such cases. One another important concept of refraction at plane surfaces is the idea of critical angle and total internal reflection. If a ray of light is incident at various angles, we notice that the ray of light gets refracted at various angles of refraction. For example, this is one. And if I change the angle of incidence, notice that the angle of incidence is here and I am increasing the angle of incidence and it starts getting towards the normal, as so towards the interface. Now, for a particular position called as C, the reflected, refracted ray just grazes the surface and this angle of incidence is in the denser medium while the ray tries to get out into the rarer medium is called as critical angle and this phenomenon is known as total internal reflection. If I increase the angle of incidence further, then the incident ray eventually gets reflected inside the same medium. This is what is called as total internal reflection. In order that the total internal reflection takes place, remember the light should be traveling from denser to rarer medium. This is one of the very important requirements. And the angle of incidence should be greater than the critical angle. This critical angle C is given by sine inverse, refractive index of the rarer medium divided by that of the denser medium. This can also be written like this, sine inverse, speed of the denser medium divided by speed of the rarer medium. Or this can also be written as sine inverse, wavelength of the denser medium divide by wavelength of the rarer medium. Any of these representations is perfectly fine as far as critical angle is concerned. One another important application of all these concepts is refraction through a prism. Let's consider a prism. This is the base of the prism. P, Q and R 
is the angle of the prism. Let us consider a ray of light incident here and this is the angle of incidence i and it gets refracted so I can show the refraction like this and this is the angle of refraction here r it should have actually traveled along this direction and it is incident here and it gets out like this this is r dash and this is i dash and it tries to get out like this and this is the final emergent rays direction and this is the deviation delta the deviation delta is given by i plus i dash minus r plus r dash and also remember r plus r dash is equal to a r plus r dash is equal to a so remember this one and if you plot the variation of deviation versus the angle of incidence i then the graph is something like this something like this this corresponds to delta max this corresponds to delta minimum and this corresponds to i minimum this corresponds to i is equal to e and this corresponds to uh, i is equal to e max and this is e is equal to 90 so the nature of the graph is of this form so if you notice there is one particular angle of incidence for which the angle of deviation is minimum that means for this delta minimum for delta to become minimum we have i is equal to i dash and r is equal to r dash so when it happens the ray of light travels symmetrically about the prism like this and in such a case the refractive index is given by sin n is equal to sin of a plus delta minimum divided by 2 whole divided by sin of a by 2 where n is the refractive index of the medium or say absolute refractive index of the medium if i consider such a thin prism for a thin prism deviation can straight away be written as delta is equal to n minus 1 into a n minus 1 into a refraction through spherical surface refraction through spherical surface let us consider a spherical surface like this and this medium is of refractive index n1 this is of refractive index n2 and this is the pole and here is the center of curvature and this is object position so i'll show an approximate representation The center of curvature is here so this is the representation and remember the equation for refraction at a spherical surface is given like this n2 divided by v minus n1 divided by u is equal to n2 minus n1 divided by r and v u and r to be kept with the sign like this remember the radius is radius of curvature is uh, here from this point to this point and in such a case the magnification is given by 
एन वन बाई एन टू इन टू वी डिवाइडेड बाई यू वन ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट अप्लीकेशन इज लेंस फॉर्मूला सपोज आई कंसिडर अ लेंस दिस इज मीडियम वन इज ऑल्सो मीडियम वन रेफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स इज एन एंड इज द पॉजिटिव डायरेक्शन देन द इक्वेशन Correspondingly, is one by v minus one by u is equal to one by f. And in general, we can write one by f is equal to n minus one into one by r one plus one by r two, where r one and r two are the radii of curvature of the different surfaces. We may also write m is equal to v by u in general as the magnification. suppose i consider two such lenses connected for example there are two such lenses kept next to each other their their focal lengths are f1 and f2 then the power of the combination is given by p1 plus p2 that is 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 that is the power of the combination while solving the problems you need to use the appropriate sign convention appropriate sign convention is to be used to solve the problem here suppose we consider silvering of on surface of a lens for example this is the construction let's assume that this surface is silver now if the plane surface is silvered then the focal length is given by r divided by 2 times n minus 1 focal length is given by r by 2 times n minus 1 and if the convex surface is silvered for example let me draw the diagram like this then the focal length is given by r by 2n r by 2n and you can use the equation p equivalent is equal to 2p plus 2 i mean p due to mirror p due to lens plus p due to mirror so this equation can be used to solve the problem as far as these ideas are concerned so these are some important concepts as far as ray optics is concerned let us take up the discussion of wave optics the basic idea of wave optics involves interference and diffraction in order to understand them we consider the following ideas the idea of coherent sources what are coherent sources two sources are said to be coherent if they produce waves of same frequency and hence wavelength and constant initial phase difference they are known as coherent sources two sources are said to be incoherent if they have different frequency and initial phase difference is also not constant as i said the important applications are in the form of interference particularly young's double slit experiment during interference the intensity of the resultant wave for coherent sources is given by i is equal to i1 plus i2 plus 2 root i1 i2 into cos phi not that is the resultant intensity remember this is for coherent sources 
if we consider incoherent sources then the intensity is given by i1 plus i2 and remember intensity is directly proportional to the width of the slit slit width and this is directly proportional to amplitude square directly proportional to amplitude square so we can write it like this i1 by i2 is equal to w1 by w2 is equal to a1 square by a2 square using this concept we can find out what the maximum intensity is and what the minimum intensity is in fact the ratio can be found out like this root i1 plus root i2 whole square divided by root i1 minus root i2 whole square and this can be simplified further a1 plus a2 whole square divided by a1 minus a2 whole square so these are some generic equations as far as interference is considered in the case of young's double slit experiment is the construction this sends the the first slit sends the light along this direction and the second sends the light along this direction to produce interference d is the slit width and for small angle i can see this happens to be d sin theta d sin theta approximately equal to theta approximately uh, d sin theta approximately equal to d theta approximately equal to d tan d tan theta let us consider a couple of important equations here number 1 distance of nth bright fringe xn is equal to n lambda d divided by d path difference is equal to n lambda where n is equal to 0 1 2 3 4 etc for constructive interference or bright fringe likewise distance of nth or say mth we will call mth dark fringe xn is given by 2m plus 1 lambda d divided by 2d and the condition is path difference is equal to 2m plus 1 lambda d divided by d two m plus 1 lambda by 2 that is the path difference where m is equal to 0 1 2 3 4 etc and this is remember this is for destructive interference to take place or dark fringe for dark fringe the separation between the fringes or say successive fringes known as fringe width beta is lambda d divided by d and the angular fringe width is equal to beta by d which is lambda divided by d suppose a transparent sheet is introduced along a along an interfering interfering wave assume that its thickness is t refractive index is n 
then the fringe is displaced by this distance d into n minus 1 into t divided by d this can also be written as beta divided by lambda into n minus 1 into t and it is shifted towards the side in which the sheet is introduced but the fringe width remember remains the same there is no change in the fringe width there is no change in the fringe width One of the important types of questions which is frequently asked is what happens if the interference experiment is repeated with bichromatic light that means two wavelengths then the fringes of the two wavelengths will be coincident so in the case of bichromatic line light then for coinciding first time we have n into beta of the longer is equal to n plus 1 into beta of the shorter that means the minimum value of n for which the wave uh, sorry the fringes coincide is given by n into beta of the longer is equal to n plus 1 into beta of the shorter. Sometimes in the questions he asks if the maximum number of maxima or say uh, minima are asked in the question here maximum number of maxima means maximum number of bright fringes so or say dark fringes are asked in the question. So use the fact that value of sin theta or cos theta can't be greater than 1. For example, if I consider n max, no, this is d by lambda. So total number of maxima corresponds to 2 into n max plus 1. Very simple idea. diffraction in Fraunhofer diffraction for minima a sin theta is equal to n lambda and for maxima a sin theta is equal to 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2. A sin theta is equal to 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2. And the linear width of central maxima that is w is equal to 2 lambda d divided by a and the angular width of central maxima is given by w e i'll call this is equal to 2 lambda divided by a so these are some important equations as far as diffraction diffraction phenomenon is concerned in our next session we are going to take up numerical problems based on these concepts Welcome to this JE crash course and the chapter for our discussion is ray optics and wave optics. Let us solve some problems. Question number one. An equiconvex lens is cut into two halves along x o x dash and y o y dash as shown. Let f f dash and f double dash be the focal lens of the complete lens of each half in it in case 1 2 and 3 1 and 1 2 choose the correct statement from the following now in the first case it is kept like this and in the second case it is kept like this it is cut like this in the horizontal cutting f dash is equal to f because R1 and R2 do not change. 
while in this case f double dash becomes 2f because r1 or r2 any one of them becomes 0 thus f dash is equal to f while f double dash is equal to 2f d is the correct choice example 2 the size of the image of an object which is at infinity as found by a convex lens of focal length 30 cm is 2 cm. If a concave lens of focal length 20 cm is placed between the convex lens and the image at a distance of 26 cm from the convex lens, calculate the new size of the image. Okay. It's your reconstruction. Similarly, here and this is 26 centimeter and this is 4 centimeter, right. So, I will write 1 by f is equal to minus 1 by u plus 1 by v that gives me 1 by v is equal to 1 by f plus 1 by u minus 1 by 20 plus 1 by 4 gives me 1 by 5 therefore v is equal to 5. Now for concave lens what do we have? Height of the image by height of the object is equal to v divided by u modulus phi divided by 4 or height of the image is equal to 2 times phi divided by 4 that is 2.5 centimeter. So, the new size of the image is going to be 2.5 centimeter. Example 3. The refractive index of the material of a prism is root 2 and its refracting angle is 30 degree. One of the refracting surfaces of the prism is made a mirror inwards. A beam of monochromatic light entering the prism from the other face will retrace its path after reflection from the mirrored surface if its angle of incidence on the prism is. So, construction. This I and this is 30 degree. So now, n is equal to sin i divided by sin r or sin i is equal to n sin r. So root 2 sin 30 that is equal to 1 by root 2. So sin i is equal to 1 by root 2 implies i is equal to 45 degree. Therefore, the angle of incidence on the prism is i is equal to 45 degree. Example 4. In order to obtain a real image of magnification 2 using a converging lens of focal length 20 cm, where should an object be placed? Simple thing. So, you need to find out u. So, I have m is equal to minus v by u. Give me minus f divided by u plus f that is minus 20 divided by u plus 20 or 2 is equal to minus 20 divided by u plus 20 that gives me u is equal to minus 30 centimeter. So, where should it be placed at a distance of minus 30 centimeter? Example 5. A telescope has objective lens of focal length 200 centimeter and eyepiece of focal length 2 cm. If this telescope is used to see a 50 meter tall building at a distance of 2 km, what is the height of the building formed by the objective lens? Okay. So, 
1 by f naught is equal to 1 by u naught plus 1 by v naught giving me 1 by 2 is equal to 1 by v naught minus 1 by 2000. That is 2 kilometers. That gives me v naught is equal to 2000 divided by 1001 and I can take it as 2. Now, magnification of the objective is equal to I divided by O that is V naught divided by U naught that gives me the image size as V naught by U naught into O that is 50 into 2 divided by 2000 is equal to 0 0.05 meter or the height of the image formed by the objective lens is 5 centimeter. is our correct choice. Example 6. A convex and a concave lens each having same focal length of 25 centimeter are put in contact to form a combination of lenses. The power in diopters of the combination is. So, 1 by f is equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 when in contact. 1 by 25 minus 1 by 25 as one is convex and the other is concave. So, this is 0 and therefore, the power which is reciprocal of focal length is 1 by infinity y infinity 1 by f is 0. So, f is equal to infinity that is nothing but 0. So, the power is 0. Example 7. A convex lens of crown glass of refractive index 1.525 will behave as a divergent lens if it is immersed in. Clearly, in order that it behaves like a divergent lens, it should be immersed in a ref medium of higher refractive index. Right? So, higher refractive index corresponds to carbon disulfide whose value is 1.66. So, A should be our correct choice. Example 8. A convex lens of focal length 0 0.5 meter and concave lens of focal length 1 meter are combined the power of the resulting lens will be ok. So, again 1 by f is equal to 1 by f 1 plus 1 by f 2. So, 1 by f is equal to 1 by 0 0.5 plus 1 by minus 1 that gives us f is equal to 1 by f is equal to 1 or power is equal to 1 by f that is nothing but 1 diopter. So, the power of the lens is 1 diopter. The power of the resulting lens is 1 diopter. Example 9. A person cannot see object clearly beyond 2 meters. The power of the lens required to correct his vision will be. What is it? So, for u is equal to infinity, v is equal to minus 2 meters. We can't see it beyond 2 meters, means v is equal to minus 2 meters. So, I will write 1 by f is equal to 1 by v minus 1 by u. That gives me minus 1 by 2 minus 1 by uh, infinity minus 1 by 2. So, f is equal to minus 2 or the power is equal to what is the power equal to power is 1 by f which is minus 1 by 2 or this is nothing but 0 0.5 diopter with a negative sign. Example 10. 
critical angle of glass is theta 1 and that of water is theta 2. The critical angle for water and glass surface would be refractive indices are given. So, we have sin theta 1 is equal to 1 by n g sin theta 2 is 1 by n of water. As n g is greater than n of water, theta 1 is less than theta 2 or critical angle theta 1 is less than theta 2. So, critical angle theta between glass and water is given by what is that sin theta is equal to n w by n g or theta should be greater than theta 2. So, theta should be greater than theta 2 that means it is option C. Few questions based on wave optics. If light of low wavelength is used in Young's double slit experiment, then the width of the fringe will be. So now, beta is equal to you know given by n lambda that is lambda d divided by d. Now, if the wavelength decreases, the fringe width decreases. So, as the wavelength of the light used decreases, the fringe width also decreases. A is the correct choice. Example 12. If a torch is used in place of monochromatic light in Young's double slit experiment, what will happen? Fringe will appear for a moment and then it will disappear. Fringes will occur as from monochromatic light. Only bright fringes will appear. No fringes will appear. So, what happens here? If we use torch light in the place of monochromatic light, then overlapping of fringe patterns takes place because it contains wavelength or say light of all wavelengths, then overlapping takes place. Overlapping takes place means fringes cannot be seen distinctly or we can say no fringes will appear. It is a continuous band. D is our correct choice. 13. Two parallel slits 0.6 mm apart are illuminated by light source of wavelength 6000 angstrom. The distance between the consecutive dark fringes on a screen 1 meter away from the slits is. Alright, the distance between two consecutive dark fringes x is given by lambda d divided by d. It is equal to you know fringe width. So, 6000 into 10 to the power of minus 10 into 1 whole divided by 0 0.6 into 10 to the power of minus 3. That is 1 into 10 to the power of minus 3 meter or 1 millimeter. So, the successive dark fringes are separated by this distance 1 millimeter. 14. If a transparent medium of refractive index mu is equal to 1.5 and thickness t is equal to 2.5 into 10 to the power of minus 5 meter is inserted in front of one of the slits of Young's double slit experiment, how much will be the shift in the interference pattern? The distance between the slits is 0 0.5 mm and that between the slits and the screen is 100 centimeter. So, the shift delta x is given by n minus 1 into t into d divided by d. 1.5 minus 1 into t 2.5 into 10 to the power of minus 5 into 100 into 10 to the power of minus 2 whole divided by 0 0.5 into 10 to the power of minus 3 and it simplifies to 2.5 centimeter. So, 2.5 centimeter is the shift.
example 15 in young's experiment monochromatic light is used to illuminate the two slits a and b interference fringes are observed on a screen placed in front of the slit now if a thin glass plate is placed normally in the path of the beam coming from the slit what happens the fringes will disappear the fringe width will change the fringe width will increase there will be no change in the fringe width so here in the presence of a thin glass plate the fringe pattern shifts the fringe pattern shifts but there is no change in the fringe width the fringe width remains the same but there will be no uh, the, there will be a shift in the position so there will be no change in the fringe width and there will be a shift Example 16. If two waves represented by y1 is equal to 4 sin omega and y2 is equal to sin omega t plus pi by 3, 4 sin omega t and y2 is equal to sin omega t plus pi by 3, interfere, interfere at a point the amplitude of the resulting wave. Okay. So clearly notice that in this case the phase difference is pi by 3, the first wave is of amplitude. 4 and the second wave is of amplitude 1 correct and the resultant amplitude is given by square root of a square a1 square plus a2 square plus 2 a1 a2 cos 5 root of 16 plus 1 plus 2 into 4 into 1 into cos pi by 3 cos 60 cos 60 you know, is 1 by 2 so this turns out to be root of 17 plus 4 that is root 21 is the answer. So root 21 is the answer. Next one. In a wave the path difference corresponding to a phase difference of phi is. Suppose I consider a wave represented like this this corresponds to one wavelength and this also corresponds to the projection of the circle over one particular circle or say one com complete oscillation or one complete circular journey the angle covered is 2 pi the angle covered is 2 pi thus how are they related if I consider say any two positions having a path difference of delta x assume that the phase difference between those two is delta phi so lambda corresponds to 2 pi delta x corresponds to delta phi so we can relate them delta x is equal to lambda by 2 pi into delta phi c is our correct choice 18 in Young's double slit experiment, if the width of the slits are in the ratio 4 is to 9, the ratio of the intensity at maximum to intensity at minima is. So slit width ratio is 4 is to 9. Therefore, I1 is to I2 is equal to 4 is to 9 or A1 is to A2 is equal to 2 is to 3. Therefore, now we have I max to I minimum given by A1 plus A2 whole square divided by A1 minus A2 whole square or this is 2 plus 3 square 2 minus 3 whole square or this is 25 is to 1. So, C is our correct choice example 19 an interference pattern was made by using red light if the red light changes e if the red light changes with blue light the fringe will become okay so you notice that the fringe width is given by lambda d divided by d that means fringe width is directly proportional to lambda now as the wavelength has decreased 
the fringe width decreases or the fringes become narrower. B is our correct choice. Example 20. Two beams of light having intensities I1 and I2, I1 and 4, I, that is I and 4I, interfere to produce a fringe pattern on a screen. The phase difference between the beams is pi by 2 at point A and pi at point B. Then the difference between the resultant intensities at A and B is. Okay. So here, I1, that is at I, I mean at A, IA is I1 plus I2 that is phi a, phi i and at b, i b is equal to i1 plus i2 plus 2 root i1 i2 into cos pi. So, this is going to be phi u i minus 4 i, that is nothing but i. Then, the difference between their intensities, i a difference i b is equal to phi i minus i that is 4 i. The difference between the intensities is 4 i. B is our correct choice. So, with that problem we have come to the end of this session.